Today, I want to summarize my views on why Kamala Harris lost to Donald Trump uh, in the election this year. I've identified six points. But of course, before I uh, start with the first one, I want to acknowledge that I tried to predict the results of this election in August. And uh, I suggested that uh, it was very likely that uh, Kamala Harris would win. And I was wrong. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I think uh, it is easier to identify the causes after the, uh, the fact than to predict. So hopefully some of these points are of some value for uh, posterior. First, I think uh, a very important decision that uh, Kamala Harris made was the choice of Tim Watts as uh, her running mate. And I think Tim Watts is a highly flawed candidate, is more flawed perhaps even than Harris herself. And perhaps that is the exact point, right? Just like Joe Biden chose Kamala Harris because Kamala Harris was so um, so in, inept, so incapable of holding the office of the president uh, so that uh, uh, Biden would feel safe being the president. And uh, I think similar dynamics perhaps played out here and Kamala Harris chose a worse candidate, someone that is less capable, less credible than herself. And that was uh, Tim Watts. Uh, alas, that was uh, one of the weak major flaws in her campaign. Of course, Tim Watts was very bad in the debate, and uh, she uh, he is also seen as a very radical left winger. Whether that is true or not, we don't know. I don't know. And uh, he is also rumored to have uh, ties to. Uh, the communists. Whether that is true, how much of that is true, we don't know. But right before the election, there were a lot of these, um, you know, uh, gossip uh, type of uh, news flowing around about uh, him and uh, uh, some high officials uh, and their daughters in in the communist party. And so, of course, these things all hurt the their campaign. Uh, what the person that Kamala Harris should have chosen was uh, RFK Jr. I think RFK Jr. was much credible, is a much credible candidate, is much more presidential, uh, and of course, sadly, more so than Kamala Harris herself. And uh, she did not feel confident uh, to choose uh, RFK Jr. I don't necessarily think that it's uh, really about. Uh, you know, the pharmaceutical stuff, but uh, we don't know. That was her decision to make, and she made it. And RFK Jr. ended up helping uh, Donald Trump, and uh, that, uh, I think, uh, that trade-off is a loss for her and a win for Donald Trump. That's the... Uh, and, of course, RFK Jr. is not only more credible, but also very popular among independents, and uh, uh, right wingers, supporters, people who da uh, who might have su supported Trump, and uh, ended up, and those who ended up supporting Trump. The second uh, point is uh, Israel and APAC. It was uh, very obvious that uh, Israel, the uh, the Israel's uh, Israelis' choice, or perhaps not necessarily Israelis, but the establishment from Israel, their choice was Donald Trump, and this is hardly surprising, knowing that uh, Netanyahu has a very close personal relationship with Donald Trump, and uh, the Republican Party has become in recent decades the favorite uh, of uh, the uh, Israel. Uh, Israeli establishment. So that is not uh, surprising, but uh, they that played a very important role. But not only in favor of Trump, but also uh, as a detraction from uh, Cam for Kamala Harris because uh, because of the conflict and because of the invasion 
they specifically timed right one month before the election they specifically ti timed to uh to to escalate in iran but more so in lebanon and this caused a lot of the uh, arab americans to uh vote for trump or at least not vote for uh, kamala harris as a uh, protest against Biden's support for Israel, even though Trump would support Israel even more. This is a protest vote. And uh, essentially, that cost uh, the Midwest uh, for Kamala Harris. The third point is uh, the endorsement and support by Joe Rogan and uh, Elon Musk. Joe Rogan, even though he only uh, endorsed uh, Trump uh, in the very end, it was quite obvious throughout uh, uh, the months preceding the election that uh, he was leaning that way. And, uh, um, you know, he is very popular, quite influential. And I, I think that played a very heavy role. And uh, Elon Musk, uh, he spent a lot of money. He act actively participated in the campaign and uh, he also has a very large, perhaps the most popular platform, the premier platform, Twitter, now called X, uh, that basically uh, allowed Trump to really communicate with, uh, with his base and uh, facilitated this uh, relationship between Trump and his supporters. And uh, there were a lot of skeptics of the Democrats, skeptics of Joe Biden, skeptics of Kamala Harris, and all those people are quite popular on Twitter as well. So all these supports from uh, Joe Rogan and uh, Elon Musk, essentially, and also their um, people like them, right, in the independent media. There was really a, 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 a wind that was quite obvious against the Democrats in favor of Donald Trump, even though uh, right now, just uh, one, one, one week, two weeks after the election, we see that those independent media now are, uh, now are uh, criticizing Donald Trump, and correctly so, because Donald Trump is allowing in the swamp in the White House again, in the administration again, as everyone who is not too stupid could have predicted. The fourth point was the economy. And that was quite easy, right? Because the economy is the most important issue and the economy is not so doing so well, especially for the working class. Uh, but uh, uh, even though Biden didn't help, Biden's policy didn't help, uh, I think the situation worsened under Donald Trump, and it will worsen again uh, further under Donald Trump. Biden only inherited the, uh, the legacy of uh, Donald Trump. The fifth point was uh, Biden himself. Biden, at the end, made this uh, quote-unquote garbage comment, and that was, I think, a, a perhaps even a deliberate sabotage as a sneer at Kamala Harris, at um, the, the Democratic par Party or Democratic est establishment for displacing him because he's a very important person uh, in, the, uh, in the Democratic Party. He's one of the leaders of the party and he got displaced, dethroned in such an embarrassing way. I think he held a grudge and... Uh, uh, it was quite, it was surprising to me that he did that, but uh, it's understandable. And I think that played um, an important part in affecting the results of the election. And finally, and perhaps really the most important point, is that Kamala Harris herself is disastrous. She's, uh, she has uh, no idea what she is doing. She is a very poor communicator. She has no uh, political philosophy. She, has, uh, she basically is out of her league. She is at most, I, I think she, um, even as an attorney general uh, of, what, what was she? Uh, Attorney General of California or whatever. 
uh, even whatever the office that she held then, uh, that was a state attorney. Maybe there was a state attorney. Uh, or was it? Uh, anyway, what she, uh, that office she held perhaps was already be beyond her capabilities. As vice president, it was quite obvious that uh, she was incapable of delivering the job requirements. And uh, it was unsurprising that uh, people in the few months since August uh, had just a few months to examine her. And that was enough to convince them that uh, she is a failure. Well, that's my summary of uh, why Kamala Harris lost to Donald Trump. Uh, I think uh, this is actually not very surprising, even though I wrote that prediction uh, a few months ago in August that uh, Trump would lose because at that point, Trump was losing momentum. Uh, but uh, these, nine, uh, these six points apparently played, uh, and some of them actually came only after August. Uh, these points uh, really swayed the uh, election and this is also this also points to the danger of uh, uh, of complacency right because a few months can be an eternity in something that is so dynamic as a national election well thanks for listening and have a great day